What's going on guys? I hope you're doing well and I appreciate you tuning in to today's episode. Today we're taking a long overdue look around my collection room. Now a room like this is always a work in progress but that's especially true with my collection room because I've got a whole wall here on this side of the room that I've not tackled yet. But before I do that, the next major thing I want to do in here is I really want to install lighting in these glass cabinets behind me. But that means pulling everything out and starting from scratch with these displays. So I thought before we do that, why don't we capture the room? Why don't we capture these displays in their current form? Also, as much work as I still have to do, I have changed up quite a bit in here since my last collection room tour video, which was well over a year ago. So I've got two new DTOLFs in here, so the action figure display is bigger than ever. I've updated the CRT TV setup. My VHS collection is displayed in a much nicer way. I've got some vintage posters framed up on the wall. So there's plenty of, of change in here since that last collection room tour video. So I thought, let's capture this progress, and I'm excited to share that with you. now. If it's your first time tuning in, because I do find that these collection room tour videos tend to draw in some new viewers. If it's your first time tuning in, welcome. My name's Scott, and I collect vintage action figures predominantly from the era of my childhood. So we're talking about late 80s through to the mid 90s, mostly loose. I, I love to collect vintage action figures loose and complete. That's my favorite way to display them. But I still pick up carded figures where I can at the right price, but also all the other cool shit that came from that era, VHS, video games, lunch boxes, magazines, all the things that made that era so special. So let's cut the intro there and let's have a look at Crusher HQ. off in the top corner here so first up we've got a recent pickup the Kenner plush Stay Puft Marshmallow Man something that I only just picked up last week but it's really cool and I, I didn't realize it had the glow-in-the-dark features until I got it in my hand so that that's really cool and then we've got a few of my lunch boxes I love these 80s and 90s lunch boxes with the thermoses and I'm trying to find one for each of the vintage action figure lines that I collect so I've got a few there that I really like and then we've got my very small Kenner Superpowers collection here. A line that I really like collecting because I just love these classic depictions of these iconic characters, but it's a line that predates my childhood, so I don't have a nostalgic connection. I just think these things are wicked and I definitely want to try and get more. Batman and Robin were the big priorities for me, so I'm happy I was able to get those as well as the Kenner Batmobile. And then we've got the Flash that the boys from Keep On Collecting were kind enough to send my way as well as the Martian Manhunter. So definitely on the lookout for Superman. And I'm a big Batman fan, so I'd love to get the Joker as well. But I'll, I'll take what I can get as I, as I come across them. If we move over here, we've got a playset that I absolutely love. We've got the Kenner Real Ghostbusters Firehouse with my second very rough Ecto-1 there. We've got a couple of Beetlejuice figures here. And then we move on to one of the definitive action figure lines of my childhood it does not get any more nostalgic than these hasbro wwf figures these are the first 12 figures here that i reviewed on the channel all complete along with the ring and then we move down and we've got the rest of my hasbro wrestling figure collection here i've got still got quite a way to go on the collection but i'm, I'm really happy to have amassed the figures that i have especially considering most of these came some years back before the prices just went crazy on these figures so really happy with the Hasbro collection. And then we move over here and we've got two of my kind of very small collections for 90s action movies that I love. We've got the Kenner Terminator 2 line, which I, I really love. I'm only trying to get the first wave of that action figure line. So I, I really just need the Endo Glow Terminator, which I'm on the hunt for. And then we've got some Robin Hood Prince of Thieves figures here. Now I do have all of the figures loose, but most of the, well, the ones that I'm missing, so the Sheriff of Nottingham and, and the others, they don't have any accessories. And until they have their soft good clothes and accessories, I really don't like to display them. So that's why they're not there. And then I've got that beautiful carded Robin Hood that the Keep On Collecting Boys were kind enough to send my way. And then we move down to one of my absolute favorite vintage action figure lines, the real Ghostbusters. 
a line that I didn't have as a kid, but I played with them because my cousin had them. And the second Ghostbusters film was my first time to the cinema. So still a lot of nostalgia for this line. And they're just beautiful figures. So we've got the Wave 1 figures all complete along with the Ecto-1. We've got the iconic Green Ghost aka Slimer, Stay Puft Marshmallow Man, and just a lot of the later action ghosts and haunted humans and other figures. And then we've got some other merchandise here. We've got the movie or the cinema cup for Ghostbusters 2, various books and comics. And then over here, we've just got another shelf with some of the other figures. So we've got the classic monsters, which are really cool. The Fright Features Wave and the Super Fright Features Wave. And one thing that I wanna do when I do reset all of these shelves up is I do wanna, just for the sake of efficiency, get some of these Ghostbusters figures up into the firehouse, just to free up some space. So I think this will look quite different next time you see it in my next collection room tour. And next up we've got my collection of crash dummies or some of my collection of crash dummies. A line that is not easy to collect these days because these toys were literally designed to be smashed a bit. So you know, it's hard to find them in the right condition but a really fun line, one that I had as a kid. and So I've definitely got nostalgia for it. And then we've got the crash test game there at the back, the board game. And if we move over here, we've got my junk bots crash dummies collection. So the era of crash dummies that I was into as a kid involved junk man and the junk bots, which yeah, I just love these figures. I just think these figures are beautiful. I think Tyco knocked it out of the park with these. So we've got the junk bots trike and the junk bots cannon. And then we've got junk man and he's three henchmen. We've got the thermos that goes with the lunchbox that you saw up the top. And then we've got a carded Crash Dummies figure, a spin in his Protex suit, packaged up with a VHS. Very, very 90s. Speaking of 90s, we move down and we've got my Dick Tracy collection here. Now there's a couple of figures I still need. I definitely need Mumbles and I believe the Rodent and then a bunch of accessories as well. These figures came with quite a few accessories, like any good Playmates line, so there's still a bunch there that I'm chasing. Now, I don't have any nostalgia for this line. I wasn't super into the film as a kid. I just think these are beautiful figures. I think Playmates knocked it out of the park. They really capture the makeup and prosthesis that were used for the film and uh, just capture the characters, and I, I just love it. I think they did really well. I've got the clamshell VHS there. I've got the carded Dick Tracy figure, so I like how these display. And then we have my Street Sharks collection, a line that doesn't get a ton of love on this channel because I don't have that nostalgia. I don't have the same passion for it that a lot of other people do, but it's still great figures. You know, really captures the, the 90s, the anthropomorphic animals just kind of jacked up and, and more aggressive than ever. So, you know, a fun toy line. I do remember when they launched here in Australia, but, you know, in 1995, uh, I was, you know, getting ready to start high school. So they just weren't something that appealed to me enough to get into as a kid. But it's still a very cool line. And, uh, you know, I had to have it represented in the collection here with a sprinkling of figures in that awesome shark cruiser vehicle. And then back up the top here, we've got my very small collection of Tonka's Supernaturals, a line that I really like. I just haven't managed to make too much progress here. Eagle Eye and Bernhard are complete. Uh, the other one I need some accessories for. And uh, you know, once I get some more of these Supernaturals, I'll find a, a better location for them. But for now, they're just sitting up here next to the Hasbros. But being up the top, they catch the light, which helps show off those holograms, which are awesome. And then we've got my little Body Wars collection. Now, once again, a line that piggybacked Mighty Max, so I'd love to have them on the Mighty Max shelf. But as you'll see when we go down a little bit, I just, I'm running out of space on the Mighty Max shelf. The Mighty Max collection has exploded in the past year or so. And then behind the Body Wars, we've got my boxed Ring Raiders Skull Squadron Action Assault Base playset. So Ring Raiders was another line that I had as a kid. Never was lucky enough to have any of these big play sets. So when I saw this at a toy fair, I had to snap it up. But uh, yeah, I love Ring Raiders. It's a line that doesn't get a ton of love, but it's certainly nostalgic to me. 
We've got a lone dino riders, dino and, and figure here. I just, yeah, I don't have enough to have a dedicated shelf, but I picked this up at Lobos last year, so I had to give it a prominent spot in the collection. We've got the Pteranodon with the Valorian Rasp. No, not the Valorian, the Rulon. I'm sorry, the, the Villain Rasp. And then we get to the vintage TMNT collection, but before we look at the figures, we've got one of the prized pieces in my collection, the vintage TMNT Technodrome. Something I would have given my left nut for as a kid, but it wasn't to be. But hey, I've got it as an adult collector and it's complete and it's just one of my favorite pieces in the collection. If you saw my most recent collection room tour video, it was displayed opened up showing off all the features. As the collection's grown, I no longer have space to do that, but I've still got to have it front and center. And then we've got the knockoff Krang figure that the Keep On Collecting Boys found in the wild and gifted to me, which I really appreciate. And then we move down to the figures. So we've got the first shelf here. Now, if you're a regular follower of the channel, you know that when it comes to vintage TMNT, my focus is completing all of the figures from 1988 to 1992. So here we have 1988 down the bottom, 1989 in the middle, and 1990 at the back. And we've got all of the figures here with the exception of the gimmicky theme turtles, wacky action, turtles in disguise, that sort of stuff. So we've got the, the, the first 10 from 1988 down here. And then we've got the 1989 figures in the middle and 1990 at the back. And all the figures are there except for Triceraton. With that said, that carded figure at the back is a Triceraton figure that I was planning on opening up. But thankfully, Carl from Retro Cartel Collectibles helped me out with a loose Triceraton so I don't have to do that. Now those carded figures will come out from there so I can just create a bit of space so these figures aren't too cramped. And when they do, I would love to get a backdrop poster that has like a sewer setting. If anyone knows, you know, anyone that does that sort of thing, that would be awesome because I just think these figures in tiers like this would look awesome with, especially once the cabinets lit up, they, I just think these figures would look awesome with like a sewer backdrop setting behind them. So I really like those. I mean, it, it is a bit cluttered. Once those carded figures come out, I will be able to open that up a little bit. And all these figures for the most part are complete. Uh, I don't have all of the secondary weapons, the ninja stars and all, all the other secondary we weapons for the four turtles and splinter and shredder for that matter, just because I just think it clutters up the display. But all of the other figures are complete. In fact, I'm lying to you. You'll see it muted your man's feet, a little baggy with all his garbage guts bones bits. I'm missing one but I'm missing one garbage gut bit. But I mean, let's be honest, like I don't consider that critical as much as I'm a completist. All the main weapons are here. And then we move down, we've got some of the other figures. So we've got wacky actions, we've got some movie stars. We've got the mutant military. We've got the talking turtles, we've got the turtles in disguise. And then up the back here, we've got some of my favorite figures, the movie stars Super Shredder and Raza and Toka. We've got a carded Super Shredder behind, that's going to Adam. You know who you are if you're watching this, mate. Remind me before Collecticon, I'll bring that. We've got the beautiful pizza thrower. This was like the childhood grail. I would have loved this as a kid. This was on the Christmas list, but I just didn't get it, but I played with a friend's version of it and it was awesome. So I was absolutely blown away when Matt and Andrew from Keep On Collecting gifted that to me for my birthday. Absolutely incredible. And then I've got some of my favorite figures from 1991 here. So we have Dirtbag, we've got Mur Dude, Ground Chuck, we've got Walkabout, I love these figures. These guys are all complete. And then we've just got some books at the back. Now, that activity book there, that was actually my childhood version. It's got my childhood writing in it and coloring in and all that cool stuff. So we've got that shelf. Again, it needs some work and it'll be refreshed, but I still like how it looks. I, I still love all those colors. Now, before we move on from the turtles, I've also got this shelf here of just some of my favorite figures. So we've got the first wave Universal Monsters. 
they're missing some accessories. Donnie as Dracula is complete. The other guys need one or two parts. And then we've got the storage shells at the front here, which I love. This is one of my favorite sub-series of turtles, the storage shells. I just think the face sculpts are awesome. I love the color-coded belts. And then we've just got some other figures here I really like. I really like that worm figure. Tattoo, even though he needs all these tattoos. My plan with tattoo is to actually get a carded version in really rough shape and just apply those stickers fresh off the card. So I've got a nice loose tattoo that displays nicely. Crazy Clown and Mike, Scale Tail, one of the coolest figures in my opinion. I love Scale Tail. So that's it for the Turtles display for now. I've got a heap of Turtles figures that aren't on display because I just, I don't have space for them. I think that when I start fresh, I need to maybe have three full shelves of Turtles, but we'll see how we go with that. I just, maybe I just need to get some better tiered displays so I can, you know, more efficiently stack in the figures. Now, as for the carded figures here, I mentioned Triceraton at the back in the middle. We've got Ray Filet on the left here. Now, he will definitely be opened up because I, I want a nice brightly colored card fresh Ray Filet to replace this kind of faded version of Ray Filet. I just think it's gonna make a world of difference in terms of how he displays. And then over here, I've got a ground chuck figure that's hanging by a thread. So once again, I think he'll be a good one to open. And again, just have like a nice card fresh complete ground chuck to upgrade my loose complete ground chuck that you can probably see there has some fading, like some color wear, some rubbing to his horns. And you know, we'll just have a nice fresh one. Uh, Triceraton will remain carded for now because like I mentioned, I was able to find a nice complete uh, or near complete loose version of Triceraton. So that's the Turtles collection. Then we move down to a very cluttered Mighty Max shelf. Now Mighty Max, like I've mentioned previously, is my favorite vintage toy line that I wasn't even aware of as a kid. So I've got absolutely no nostalgic connection to the line, but I just absolutely love the creativity, the ingenuity, the artistry, the engineering that went into this line, I think is highly underrated. Sure. You know, the prices on them are going up more and more people are in search of them but you know when you look at the line inside and out when you look at these toys you know, the mini figures the hidden features the engineering the way it all everything closes up and there's a spot for each figure uh, the storytelling the comic backstories the packaging art i just think it's an incredible toy line so i'm, I'm mainly collecting the various doom zones now as you could probably tell, this shelf was originally dedicated half to Mighty Max, and there was other stuff going on over here. And as I've got more Mighty Max sets, it's just become pretty cluttered here. So we've got some Barnyard Commandos that are gonna, I'm gonna find another home for them, and I'm gonna free up some space here so this shelf can be 100% Mighty Max. I can have all the Doom Zones in two rows at the back, and then I can have space at the front for the smaller sets like the Horror Heads and Shrunken Heads. And then over here we've got, that's my childhood collection of monster in my pocket. I don't really have space to display them all standing up, but I saw Alfie's vintage toys display them in a, in like a vase like that, you know, in a rainbow kind of color effect. And I thought that was pretty cool. So definitely some work to be done on this shelf. But again, like I just love Mighty Max. So I had to squeeze in those Mighty Max sets. And then if we go down the bottom here, we've got some carded Jurassic Park figures. We've also got the loose Jurassic Park figures. We've got a random Cadillacs and dinos. I've almost finished that line, but, but again, I just, I had a space there at the back. So I just thought we'd continue the dino theme with the Cadillacs and dinosaurs Deinonychus. And then we've got probably one of the top three most memorable fast food toy promotions of my childhood. We've got the Lamb Before Time hand puppets from Pizza Hut, something I vividly remember as a kid. So, you know, I, I just had to pick them up. So a bit of a dino theme going on there. Next up, down at the bottom of this detail, we've got a colorful mix of 90s goodness. So first up, we've got 
my little collection of Bucchio hair figures. Yet another line that I collect, having been inspired by the boys from Keep On Collecting who got me started with a couple of those figures. So I need a couple more to finish that line as well as a bunch of accessories. We've then got the Super Mario Brothers movie line based on the 1993 film by Ertl, a film that uh, is quite divisive, but one thing that can't be argued is these figures are actually really cool, really cool representations of the characters and the actors that played them and the awesome makeup and costume effects in the case of that wicked Goomba figure. And then back here, we've got kind of the opposite situation at play, an awesome film in Kenner's Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure with some pretty underwhelming figures. Now, when I say underwhelming, they display beautifully. I think they're super collectible, but I just don't know how many kids in 1991 were queuing up for Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure figures. Unlike just about every awesome action figure line that had some sort of conflict between good and evil, in this case, they're all just rocking out, having a good time. So still, like I said, really cool figures that display great, but I, I can't imagine these were too much of a hit back in the day. So a really cool looking mixed bag here. Next up, we've got a shelf dedicated to Ring Raiders with a couple of my favorite Ring Raiders items. We've got the boxed Ring Raiders Battle Blaster a toy that I vividly remember having as a kid and having an absolute ball with it. That's sealed in box. And then we've got a carded set here, which is really interesting because Ring Raiders were sold in squadrons of four planes. And the leader of the squadron was named and had kind of a character bio, but the other three planes within the squadron weren't. In any case, this carded set here only has the leaders of each squadron. So I found that pretty cool. As like a fan of Ring Raiders, as a kid who loved playing with Ring Raiders, I thought that was a pretty cool carded set to have in the collection. And then I've got some loose Ring Raiders and Skull Squadron planes, and these are organized in their respective squadrons or their respective wings as they were released. So yeah, a nice little representation of Ring Raiders in the collection. Next up, we've got another line that I didn't have as a kid, but I still appreciate the heck out of it. We've got my Toxic Crusaders collection. You know, I kind of look at this like most do as a spiritual successor to the Vintage Turtles line. The figures display great alongside the Turtles. Those 90s colors and gross out features are just taken to the next level. And I, I just love how these, how these figures display. I've got one figure I need. I just need Bonehead to complete the figures. There is one accessory I need. I need the Radiation Ranger's second little glow-in-the-dark landmine. Aside from that, it's complete. Oh, and of course, No Zone's Toxic Waste Barrel. Aside from that, it's complete, and I've got the Crusader Skater that Headbanger's standing on, and I've got the Hideous Hovercraft that Major Disaster and No Zone are standing on. I need a bunch of parts to complete those. But aside from that, Bonehead is my major priority to complete the figures. And then sticking with Playmates, we've got my vintage Skeleton Warriors collection. A collection that's just about complete in large part due to Matt from Keep On Collecting. So a massive shout out to Matt. The figures that are here are all complete. And the only ones I need are Grim Skull and Prince Lightstar, so two of the humans. Now with that said, the skeletons, the villains in Skeleton Warriors are so much cooler than the human characters. But hey, I'm, I'm sick, so I need to complete the line. I need to get those last two humans. And then we've got the vehicles. So we've got the, the skull cycle. And then at the back, we've got the war horse. And I just love how these Playmate Skeleton Warriors figures display. Uh, I, I need to find a better location for these. When I first set up these displays, I, I didn't have the Skeleton Warriors collection. So when I start from scratch with this display, I'm gonna give some priority to this collection here. And then behind the Skeleton Warriors, I've got a boxed Crash Dummies playset, the Junkyard playset, a really cool playset that is complete aside from one piece. And I managed to get that one piece from eBay in the US. Shout out to Matt for helping me piggyback his My US shipment. That piece is coming very, very soon and I'll be able to complete it. I'll be able to review it in a video and we're gonna get it on display. So I'm really excited to dig into that Crash Dummies Junkyard playset. And 
from there we move to the back wall where we've got my vintage Daybill cinema posters. So we've got Ghostbusters 2, like I mentioned, the first film I ever saw at the cinema. Home Alone, one of my all-time favorites. And TMNT 2, The Secret of the Ooze, another film that I love. Now these are all vintage cinema Aussie Daybill posters. With that said, Secret of the Ooze has that coming to video in November sticker on it. So I'm sure this was repurposed for video stores, which is really cool. Now, before we get into this area, I've got to show you guys this. This is a, a recent update to the room. Now, this is a retail hanger. Now, this was from Bennett Longboard Collectibles. I picked this up at Collecticon probably about a year ago, maybe even more. But I finally got it up in the room. So, down here we have my CRT TV. But because of the bulkiness of the CRT TV, the space behind it is kind of goes to waste a little bit. So I thought that was a nice spot for the hanging vintage TMNT display. A little bit sun faded. I imagine this was hung in a window of a store or maybe it was just the UV lighting within the store just kind of discolored it. But I can't complain too much. Ben really looked after me on the price for this thing and I just think it looks great. And then we have the CRT TV set up. Now, if you saw my recent video where I ranked my most nostalgic Super Nintendo games from my childhood, I mentioned that this was actually our family TV in the 90s. So, you know, when I found this in my dad's storage, I just had to get it into the collection room. So we flicked the old Sony Trinitron, which was in here for the last collection room tour. And now we've got the Panasonic that was in our family room as a kid, the old Crusher family television with the entertainment unit that it sat on. And then as far as up here, I just wanted to load this up with some items. So we've got the Kenner Terminator 2 assault vehicle. We've got a couple of iconic VHS from my childhood, the TMNT movie from 1990, Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. We've got the giant sized vintage Playmates Raphael that my mate Stephen Brown was kind enough to send my way. We've got the complete blast Magus that I reviewed the Mighty Max Blast Magus that I reviewed in my last video. And then we've got that Triceraton that I referred to earlier that I have to make a space for on the TMNT shelf. We've got that knockoff that I picked up at Second Childhood Toys. And then we've got a bunch of muscle figures here. These are actually childhood hand-me-downs from my cousin that I've still got in my collection. And then how cool is this? This is a, a VHS rewinder that I found at a flea market that I just thought would display great on top of the telly. And then we have the VHS display. So as you can see here, a lot of Coliseum home video, WWF wrestling tapes. We've got some other movies here. Now these are all the big box X rentals. And most of those WWF tapes are, are also X rentals. And then if we move down, we've got some of the smaller Silver Vision UK WWF videos and then we've just got some small small box like retail sell through VHS down here But up here What well, my plan for this shelf up here is just to kind of regularly rotate this With recent pickups or just items that I want to highlight So we've got my little attack of the killer tomatoes Mattel collection along with the Attack of the Killer Tomatoes VHS that Andrew from Keep On Collecting was kind enough to send my way. We've got the Skeleton Warriors Collector's Case that my boy Abdul surprised me with at the last Collecticon, so big shout out to Abdul. I had to make sure this had a, a nice prominent display spot, although when I do reconfigure the glass cabinets and I get the Skeleton Warriors in a Detolf, as opposed to sitting on top, that will sit behind because it's got beautiful artwork and it's a little bit more obscured there than I would like. But for now, I just wanted to shine a light on it there. We've got the Monster in My Pocket Howler from Second Childhood Toys in my last Toy Hunt vid. We've got the Home Alone laser disc, which I wanted to have below the Daybill Cinema poster. We've got the Mega Mutants Killer Bee that I picked up at the last Collecticon. We've got the Kenner Jurassic Park Young T-Rex. We've got that Madball style knockoff gross out 80s bat. We've got this dude here. This is Jackie Jade from the Soma 
World Wrestlers toy line. This is a, a line that I, so this figure right here, I was gifted this from my parents as a kid when I asked for the Hasbros. So a little bit disappointing at the time, but it became one of those things that I wanted to search for. And then we've got some other kind of special items here. We've got a card of James Bond Jr. We've got a boxed or the box from the Mighty Max Terror Talons, Food Fighters. These are some monster in my pocket figures that I didn't have as a kid. These are ones that I've picked up since. More of the childhood muscle figures that were handed down from my cousin. And then a cool carded blister pack of muscle figures there. So I like how this is looking, but I also like the idea of rotating this fairly regularly just with items that I've recently picked up. And there it is again, the VHS display. And then last of all, just sitting on the floor here, we've got my boxed AFX Ghost Racer slot car set. This is a toy that we had as a kid. My brother and I were given this for Christmas in 1992. And my brother found this at a flea market a couple of years ago and called me and, and just snapped it up and I'm really happy he did. This is complete in box, but it does need some work to get it to get it operating. And you know, I just don't really have the patience or desire to be restoring this. But that box is just so iconic to me that I would actually quite like to maybe find a sealed version or even just an empty box in really nice condition and just display that once I get some floating shelves in here and then part with this because I sold another 90s slot car set to a local collector and he really wanted this, but I, I didn't want to part with it because I needed the box. So, you know, I'm hoping that I can maybe find a sealed version or just like a really nice mint empty box. And then I can part with this because, you know, I'd much rather the set, the actual set that's inside the box bring joy to a slot car collector than just be sitting here in my collection, not getting any love. So there you go the AFX Ghost Racer slot car set. So there you have it guys, plenty of work still to be done, but I really like how the room's coming along and I hope you enjoy getting a look around the joint. Now I've got to say, as much work as it is, I am really looking forward to starting from scratch with these displays behind me because when I first set them up, I put a lot of thought into them, but as the collection's grown, a lot of these shelves have got fairly loaded and cluttered. And I do think it's important to strike that balance between displaying as much of your collection as you can because we don't collect to store away in tubs. We, we collect these items to display and appreciate them, but also in a way where they're not too cluttered, where each figure or each item can be seen and appreciated. So, you know, it's all about striking that balance and starting from scratch will allow me to, to reset and to achieve that once again. Aside from that, I've got plenty of other ideas as to where we go from here with the collection room. I wanna take some inspiration from Matt from Keep On Collecting and also Dino from Geek Strong by mounting to the wall a pegboard with hooks so I can hang a lot of my carded action figure collection on hooks and recreate that toy store feeling. And that'll also free up space in the glass cabinets behind me. So that's definitely on the list. I also want to mount up some floating shelves to this wall because that'll give me more display space without taking up too much floor space in the room. I've got to tell you guys, I'll, I would love to just have glass cabinets on every wall in here, but as you can probably tell, it's a narrow room and I just think if I go glass cabinets on the opposite side, it's just going to chew up too much floor space. It's going to make it really impractical for me to position myself in here to film videos or even just to like kick back and play Super Nintendo or watch a movie on VHS. I want to try and keep this room functional. So those are the next major priorities in addition to the lighting behind me. But then there's other smaller jobs. Now that my Monster In My Pocket minifigure collection is almost complete, I want to get a wall-mounted display unit to display the Monster In My Pocket collection. I've got other vintage posters that I haven't framed or got up on the wall yet, so plenty of work still to be done, but those are jobs for another day. So we'll wrap it up there. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you've made it this far, you're a dead set champion. I hope to hear from you in the comments. Let me know if you've got any suggestions for my collection room. Let me know how you guys are traveling with your own collection rooms. As always, you can hit us up on Instagram at Crusher Collects, and I'd love to see photos of your pickups or photos of your collection rooms. Love seeing that shit. But with all that said, hope you guys have a great week. I'll see you back soon for the next one. But for now, I'm gonna kick back and play some Super Nintendo. So I will say goodbye to you and cheers.